So welcome. Um, we're sitting here tonight with uh, Dr. Wes Vander Ark and Dr. Aisha Khalid, two past presidents of the AOA, to just give everyone a quick update on USP General Chapter 797 and its implications in your practice and review some of the resources that the AOA has available. So I'll turn it over to Dr. Khalid and Dr. Vander Ark to give you their perspective on USP General Chapter 797. Thanks, everyone. So just the general... Um history, I guess, of uh, USB 797. It's been around since 2008, I believe, and uh, with the previous chapter, and now just recently, the uh, revision of that chapter uh, 797 has come into effect, actually starting November 1st of this year, so just a couple of days ago. So it's gone through a number of iterations in that um, time frame, starting back in 2019, even when it was supposed to go into effect, but then that was delayed for uh, various reasons. And so now four years later, it has just been instituted. So Aisha, you wanna talk about uh, some of the components of that? Yes, absolutely. So I do wanna point out, thanks for joining us. I do wanna point out that the AAOA has a sort of one-stop shopping approach with these guidelines now being in effect. And on our website, on the main area of the website, as well as in the education section, we have a few things to take a look at that should make it easier. With the caveat, of course, Wes, that we were not able to put the guidelines themselves directly on our website because um, the USP does not allow us to do that. So to actually access the USP guidelines, you have to go directly to the USP website and they have to be purchased. But we have a few documents that uh, were put together to provide a really good overview. One of them uh, on the AAOA website, one of them is the AAOA Practice Resource Toolkit. And within that, you can certainly see on the first page onto the second page, a listing of what needs to be done. And the first caveat to everything is the personnel training and the competency on the media fill test and the finger gloved fingertip test has to um, all be documented. So the goal of the module and the kits that we'll tell you about really is to have you start by designating one person in your practice that is in charge of keeping the standard operating procedure book as the USP requires that really uh, writes down all the people that are involved and what you know that they've completed the training and that competency is documented annually so you you want to have that written down somewhere and then the second page goes into a little bit of detail before we talk about the kits that you can buy in the module let's talk a little bit about the hygiene garbing and facilities components that are both found in our practice resource toolkit as well as our clinical care statement so Wes, do you want to talk a little bit about the GARB and the facilities requirements? Yeah, yeah. So again, it, it, just like Aisha said, that all those requirements are listed very nicely. It's a nice summary of uh, the USP 797 uh, guidelines uh, now that are current. Uh, hygiene, again, you have to GARB in sterile, sterile GARB, like a gown, a a hat, or if you have a beard, it has to cover your beard, actually. Uh, also sterile gloves. You need to have a work uh, workspace that's designated for your uh, mixing. So it doesn't have to be a, a hood, but it, just as long as you have a, a specific uh, defined area in your office, in a room, again, has to be, there are specific requirements, again, listed in that, in that uh, clinical care statement as to what that uh, allergy extract mixing area needs to look like or um, have. Um, again, a clean, clean area um, separated from the rest of the office, um, no overhangs if possible, um, good lighting, et cetera. Take a look at that list. It's very helpful. The next thing you would need to do again with, with your vials, you need to be able to label the vials. You need to have beyond use dates and uh, serial numbers for those vials all stored. So there's a variety of ways to do that. If, if you have um, software that you use for your 
allergy mixing and allergy testing, then that should all be incorporated into your software so that you can identify what antigens from what vial and what lot number, et cetera, were put in specific patient vials. That's uh, the requirement. If, if not, you'll have to do that all on paper. And we have um, examples of, or samples of paper charts that you can use in our uh, toolkit as well to make that possible for you. So Dr. Vander Ark, you just went through, you know, what felt like a lot of things that I have to do, right, in a busy practice, and I want to get compliant. What can I do? Where can I go on the AAOA website to just get a listing of exactly what I need to learn and what I need to order so that I can get myself and the staff compliant right away within a week? So if you're on the homepage of the website and you go over to the right under live and online CME, you can scroll down and select the USP 797 online module and click the learn more and register. And that brings you to a listing of uh, all these helpful resources that the uh, AAOA has for you, including USB compliance, the practice resource toolkit, where it has lots of directions and how to do things, but also uh, sample forms. Um, the clinical care statement is there as well that we have already been referencing. There's also a USB 797 workshop handout, which is a nice list of all the things that need to be kind of monitored or checked off by the uh, designated supervisor in your office to, to make sure all these things are being done correctly, that uh, he or she can monitor folks that need to be certified for this. And then there's the order forms for both the finger glove test and also the media fill test, uh, both from Valatech. And our AAOA members get those for a reduced rate through that company. So everything's in one spot. So it makes it easy for you. Now you also have to train your staff. They have to be, they have to prove some kind of competency every year. So what options does the AAOA have for that? I'm so glad you asked that question. So as we talked about the clinical care statement, you know, the two pages already designate that you have to have someone who's the supervisor of the training. And then within the practice, everyone involved needs to get trained. And so that needs to be done annually. It needs to be documented. And because of that, the AAOA has developed an adaptive learning module. Before I tell you where to find that and what it does, I do want to point out that one of the reasons that we thought it was important to let you all know that this is available, all these resources, is because many of us, including myself, are getting emails from a variety of companies stating that for a monthly fee, they'll help you to get and stay USP compliant. And we just wanted to let you know about this cost-effective option that the AOA has developed for a while now um, that allows you to do the same thing. So, you know, don't feel that you necessarily have to be paying fees every month. This is just something that needs to be done. Once you do it, you'll be able to do it again. So if you go back to the main website of the AAOA uh, that Wes mentioned, and then click on the USP module on the right, you'll see on the, on the page of the USP General Chapter 797, on the right-hand side, it says register today pointing out, let the staff know that it is an adaptive learning module. So you will be asked the question different ways to be sure that you've learned the material before you end the module. Um, so it's a little bit more circuitous, but it's really attuned to the points that you need to have as takeaways. So, I mean, that being said, once you've done that module, each of, each of the staff have done that module and it's been recorded in the standard operating procedure documentation and you have a date of when they did it, they went on to get the Valatech kit and did the media fill and the glove fingertip and you went through that for everyone, you're going to be in really good shape for the USP, I think. So basically for each staff person, you need to have the module, you need to have the finger glove, the media fill test. They need to be, you need a standard operating procedure. You need a designated mixing area. And then you need to have you you need to have someone designated in your office to monitor that and make sure all the documentation is done correctly or all the documentation is, is in one book or one folder, and um, 
that they monitor the rest of the staff yearly to make sure everyone is in compliance. That's and an we, excellent summary. Yeah. I think I think if a, a practice does that, and again, super easy to find, we've tried to make it as easy as possible, you're going to be in excellent shape and you can move on to, to other things you've covered USP compliance. And you, and you don't need to spend $130 a month to be each staff person to be compliant. <laughs> you don't. And I think... I think you raise a really good point because these guidelines are unknown. It's hard to, it's tough to sort of know exactly what they say. It creates fear, right? For all of us in our practices. And our goal was to demystify it and put a summary of what it entails and then give you all the resources all in one place. Um, And then if you have any questions as you're going through the website or registering, let us know. But I think it's going to be the fastest way to get there. Yep. That sounds great. Well, thank you, Dr. Vander Ark and Dr. Kled. We appreciate that nice summary of USP 797, what our members need to do, and the, the review of all the resources AOA has available for its members. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.